fresh is the word. I'm Jim Duggan, got long wood for plenty hoes. I keep it fresher than fresh, but you already know. You suckers bum me, I'm money, I got a ton of flows. My weed loud like a motherfucking thunder roll. Your shit quiet like you ballin' on a budget though. We see your kicks and we laugh and yell the of those. You see me shining like a suit on puffy. You know my grind and shit is too strong, buddy. That's why the dude call money. I be stuntin' like it's nothing at all. Cause it's nothing to me, it's probably something to y'all. Trying to smoke like me, then come and fuck with your dog. Got a closet full of kids, you can't cop it tomorrow. And I'm fresher than the freshest, you can tell it's in my essence. Bitch, you see the way I'm rapping? Yes, I do this shit to death. But tell I'm running out of breath. But tell somebody cut a check. But either way, you know it's fresh. But either way, you know it's fresh. Fresh. We fresh. 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 Fresh, God damn it, we fresh. Welcome to the Fresh is the Word podcast, the podcast about music, pro wrestling, and combat sports. I'm your host, Kay Fresh. And before we start the show, I'd just like to remind everybody how they can support the works of this podcast. If you go to freshisthepodcast.com, you can go ahead and share any of the links on the website on any of your social media. That would be cool. Or you can click on the link that says support the podcast, and there's a PayPal link that you can donate to. And also, there's an Amazon link. If you make any purchases on Amazon, use that link, and they'll shoot back some commission to us. Also, on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com slash freshisthepodcast and give us a like and share any of the links on there on uh, Facebook. Also, we're on Twitter and Instagram at freshistheword1. That's freshistheword, then the number one. And also, you can subscribe to Fresh is the Word on iTunes and Stitcher. And uh, after you subscribe, go ahead and give us a a good rating, hopefully five stars. All right, it's enough of that. Let's get on to the show. And like always, I'm joined with my co-host, MMA and pro wrestling connoisseur and proud Marine, V Styles. How you doing, man? Hey, what's up, K-Fresh? How you doing? What's up, people? Happy holidays. Happy holidays, yeah. I'm doing great. I'm doing good. It's, It's end of the year, you know, getting ready to wrap things up. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of things going on in the world of MMA. A lot of Woo! craziness going on. <laughs> God, like th- things just never sleep, you know, in the world of MMA, don't they? Oh man, it's always a lie. <laughs> always a lie. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, um, yeah. The big news. It definitely just... never sleeps, man. It's it's always some news to report. Right, right. It's crazy. And like in the big news, just before we. Uh, here recording this podcast is that uh, the UFC announced that uh, Cyborg got dinged for an anti-doping uh, violation from USADA. Uh, mm-hmm. Which, uh, just for per- you know, personally, when I heard that, like I was just visibly upset because I was like, "We we we love Chris, yeah, and we know that we know exactly what's gonna happen with like." Mm-hmm. The overzealous fans in the media, they're just automatically going to villainize her. doesn't matter what it is. Don't do that. She's dirty. Shut the fuck up. You have not a clue. Right. and Not a clue. And, and that's the one thing I always hate with these, um, these USADA dings is that the way that they're uh, first, uh, you know, uh, reported on and, or first announced. They're so vague that everybody always goes towards the worst case scenario for these people. Yep. Yep, that's literally the worst. And especially when it comes to somebody like uh Chris Cyborg, when 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 you got um a majority of <clears throat> fans or as I like to call them casual fans <clears throat> that only know Ronda Rousey. And when they hear the name Chris Cyborg all they know about her is, you know, at least a quarter of them, oh, she looks like, and I'm like, man, shut the fuck up. What is that? You know, and right. I like Chris. To me, Chris is beautiful. We love you, Chris Cyborg. Uh, but, you know, fans are always saying negative stuff because of what they heard yeah. and, you know, this person say or what they read uh, about what this person has said about Chris Cyborg instead of actually knowing the ins and outs of what a person, you know, has put into their body. 
because most people to this day still think that she popped positive for steroid, and it was a di- and it was a dietary uh, supplement that she fell uh, for. Yeah, but yet she still she still gets put the the you know the whole stereo uh, the, the the whole steroid label. Um, it's just sad, man. But uh, you know that's where me and you come from. The set the record straight on what's really going on. And uh, to let people know that it wasn't a steroid that she popped positive for. She popped positive uh, for something that was prescribed to her um, for her recovery after the bad weight cut. So we're just going to have to wait and, and see how this way, uh, how this plays out. And hopefully, you know, the right thing to do was w- would be to, you know, give her an exemption up to when that point you know, so it wouldn't be, you know, any problems in the near future. Right, definitely. And, yeah, she did uh, release a statement, you know, breaking down the whole, uh, you know, whole issue, uh, named the substance that uh, um, she was popped for, and uh, she did say that, uh, she said, my doctor's experience with uh, USADA testing informed me that there were no additional steps needed for approval with the associated treatments given to me following my UFC Brasilia fight. We are fully in cooperation Mm -hmm. with USADA at this time and have already started the process of applying for a retroactive therapeutic use exemption. Um, Yeah, so it it just seems like it was something that her doctor said that we should be cool with. She wasn't going to have a problem with. Yeah. But but, but she wound up popping positive for anyway. Well, at the end of the day, if it's prescribed from a doctor... You know, especially that, then I think you know they'll get they'll grant her that exemption, man. But you know, I personally think that this story is bigger than what we get, man. Because the bottom line is, we're all mad about that one forty five title uh, shot going to Holly Holm and right. this other girl who I've never heard of, um, and, and, and we all know who the true champion is and they are in fact in my opinion fighting for the interim <laughs> featherweight championship and they because just uh, the real, be, be, because the real champion is yeah. Chris Cyborg and they won't be really considered champion until they you know it's not going to happen but they won't be considered champion unless they be right. Cyborg so and, yeah and apparently <laughs> um Dana White said today that that uh fight for the uh 145 belt is going to be the the main event for 208. That's bullshit. She, oh my god. <laughs> but um what and one of the things that I was really thinking about with especially this you know this event that came on today was that this isn't just a a thing that happened. This is like a culmination of this bad relationship that's been going back and forth between Cyborg and the UFC. And this Indeed. happened because of everything that happened before. Yep. Yep. But in the end, they can only hold off the inevitable for so long. <laughs> unless, unless Chris just say, Hey, fuck it. I'm walking away. Right. She's going to be the 145 champion. So whether it be today, tomorrow, next, uh, sometime next year, it's going to happen. When she gets that shot, it's going to happen. You can only delay it for so long. Right. And I just think politics plays into the announcement that we heard today. So um, I'll say it again because Chris Cyborg likes a lot of my stuff on my page. I'm very <laughs> proud that she does that. And, right. You know, I Me fuck too. some Chris Cyborg. <laughs> and um we love Chris Cyborg and we want you know people to recognize you you know like the majority of the smart people that really know this shit recognize recognize you as the 145 world champion so let's go champ as my man Shannon the Cannon Briggs would say and you'll get over this hurdle you know I believe you know I definitely believe it but Let's see how all this, uh, you know, plays out. You know, I really, I'm just curious 
you know, I haven't even, I haven't had time to really look at comments and stuff like that, but I bet you somebody right now that's writing a comment as we speak, I knew she was juicing. She was, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Right, right. No, that that's, mm-hmm. that was one of the things that I was just visibly upset about today. I'm like, man, I, they're going to just have field day with this, you know, before they even learn the facts, yep. you know, and that that's someone that, and even with somebody like, um, like say a John Jones, he doesn't even go through mm-hmm. that sort of immediate scrutiny for what's happened with it's him. It's all about who you like. Yeah. It's all about who you like, and it's all about how a person has been painted. See, Chris Cyborg and John Jones situation is a little different. You know, I decided that I'm not necessarily going to be too hard on John Jones. You know, I, I want the thing is you really want to see him win. I want to see John Jones win. Definitely. But, he constantly gets himself in situations to where it's like, damn, man, you can't be this immature. You know, you, you're a, you know, multimillionaire and, 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 and a part of, a part of, a, a part of the biggest mixed martial arts company in the world. Um, you're one of the faces, but yet you keep fucking up. Right. You know, but at the same time, but at the same time, you can look at it a lot of ways, man, you know, you know, maturity doesn't just happen overnight, man. So right. you, you, you have to have, you have to have experiences to make you better, man. So I, I'm pretty much off the, the John Jones, you know, saying negative shit about him. I mean, for what, you know, right. I mean, just to get a laugh, you know, I, I, I wish you well, oh, yeah, you definitely. know, but I'm, I'm not going to front, you know, the next, if he fucks up again, it just, you just get more weight to people like me to talk shit. So, you know, the, 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 the longer he stays out the news, you know, as far as on the negative end, because I want to see the man win. I, I mean, you know, he's a man child. And just imagine if that man child grows up. You know I mean, in, in the cage, right. he's eons apart from people. But outside the cage... It it, it kind of levels off how great he is at how great he is inside the cage if that makes sense. So you know I I, I want to see, but their stories are completely different. Right. You know, um, people don't like Chris Cyborg for whatever reason, and again, she still never tested for for, for steroids. It's a dietary supplement. Right. You know, now you can say what you want about that, but it's a zillion people that 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 have tested you know positive for dietary supplements that doesn't necessarily mean that they're juicing it just means that they're on a supplement and a lot of times these people use this type of stuff to cut weight so you know it's and then that list changes every week you know from week to week you know it might it might be you know one week you know uh raisins not on the list then you start eating raisins the next thing you know raisins on the list but you may right. eat raisins for eight nine months and now all of a sudden raises is on the fucking list. Now you're looked at as a doper. So it's 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 a lot that goes with this, but I think uh, you know, Chris would be all right. Right. And that was one Chris of the things that uh I've definitely seen a lot of like fighters be sort of um maybe confused and like disappointed about when USADA came into the fold is because when that first came in they said they were like they were coming in to educate more about uh, supplements and drugs and what, what you can, but instead they've been almost like a police, almost like a law enforcement, right. more than an educational tool. Mm-hmm. But, totally agree. So, but I don't think USADA has done a good job of educating because, right? you know, um, it, if they did, then you know the the most knowledgeable uh well, excuse me the, the most the, the person that's not knowledgeable about knowledgeable about it should be able to read somewhere or understand the do's and the don'ts or and certain criteria certain things and people think positive they think steroids off rip and that that's just like wow man you know you you, you have to educate the masses and it, it'll never happen we just have we just have uh geniuses out there that really think they know more than what they really do <laughs> right right kind of uh transitioning to something yeah. else and uh kind of 
what we were kind of just talking about. I was um, you uh, you know, like we were talking about last uh, last episode. You were out in Ireland with uh, King Mo. Mm. Um, I was yep. yeah, I was listening to uh, Chael Sonnen's uh, podcast, and he was bringing up uh, he he was talking about the fight. And kind of go, giving his uh, thoughts about what he thought about King Mo. And one of the things that he mentioned was when King Mo kind of uh, broke out, you know, everybody thought King Mo was going to be the guy to, you know, finally, like, take out John Jones. But their, uh, their right. paths never crossed. Like, what, right. what do you think would happen if that fight actually ever happened? You know, I, I might be biased here. And this is because I know the dude. Yeah. Um, styles make fights. Um, John Jones is a very tall task, but I think I think Mo I think Mo would get him. I think Mo I li- I really think Mo would get him. Mo is is so sm- his fight IQ is so fucking high, and like pe- dudes don't know how to adjust on the fly. Like, Mo can adjust to you. I mean, it's been some things that have happened. You know, we talk about his record all the time and what it should be. It should be, his record should be really 23-2. and two. The phase out loss and the Emmanuel Newton loss, the first one with the spinning back fist. Shit happens. Hell. Yeah. GSP got knocked out by, by fucking, uh, what's our, our, our boy Matt Sarah, man, with, 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 with an overhand left or overhand right. You know what I'm saying? That, that. That that's how he lost. Shit happens in MMA. There is no shame in losing. It's about how you learn from it and not letting shit happen again. Yeah. And my boy should be twenty three two and one. You know the one no contest against Lorenz Larkin. Um. Even though he smashed Lorenz Larkin, but um, and I like Lorenz Larkin, but I really believe Mo has the tools. To be John Jones, I just, you know, Mo is a different type of fighter. You you can't teach the shit that he do. Um, you know, he hits like a, I mean, dude, like, Mo knocks heavyweights out on the regular. You know, he hits fucking hard, man. I'm talking about, you know, people, I mean, Mo puts people to sleep like it's nothing. He, his strength level is on all, look, he won the strike force world title, not having any ACLs. Right. Um, only his fifth, sixth fight. And that was just pure athletic ability and throwing hands a little bit. Mo, you know, Mo has, you know, his boxing skills have, have went up the last seven, eight years. You know, out here training with, with some of the best guys, man, as far as throwing hands. His wrestling, if you look at his percentage, takedown-wise and being takedown, you know, in Bellator, I bet you Mo will be number one. You know, generally, when he's taking you down, he's taking you down. So if he if he shoots seven, eight times, generally you go into the mat. Right. It's only very, it's only very few that sprawl and, and know how to, you know, get out of his, you know, ones or doubles. Um you know, he's a beast. He is a beast. He would present a lot of problems for, you know, John Jones. But I think John Jones would, you know, I think he would try to, you know, I think he would try to bang with Mo, which would be a mistake because I, I think Mo hands is that quick. And, and you know, my boy has been on the end of some horrible decisions, you know, so I – you know, that was the thing. I mean, we used to talk about that shit. We used to talk about that shit. Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> it's going to happen, V. And, and, you know, for whatever reasons, man, you know, we've been on this other path. Man. We cool with this shit. We cool with that. But, yeah, that's, yeah, see, that's real shit, man. She don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> she don't know. Right, right. And uh, going back to uh, last weekend with uh, King Mo's fight against Ishii uh, out in Ireland. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, King Mo uh, ended up winning by decision. Uh, you could tell visibly mm-hmm. he was disappointed about the way the fight was going, even though he won. Yeah, I can, I can, um, I tell you this: you plan 
to fight a certain way. But then, you know, when a person does, okay, for instance, if you look at all the issues old tapes, he's a softball, yeah. and he always moved the wrong way as a softball when he fought people. He never moved. He ne he, he never he, he would never move to the right. Like when you fighting a when you fighting a softball, yeah. you supposed you supposed to move the other direction. He will always go the wrong direction. So this way he actually went the right direction. So <laughs> that threw him off a little bit. Um, he dominated the fight, but what are you to do? You know, with, as far as Moe's striking is concerned, Moe's a counter puncher. Yeah. So in order for him to do what he's trained for, a person has to engage with him. And if they're not engaging, if they're not throwing, if they're on the defensive, then now it's, okay, let me, okay, this person is not, that's, he, he not following my game plan. Okay, well, let me dump him and try to beat him down on the ground, which is what he did. Like Ishi, Ishi didn't want to. He didn't want to bang. He felt that power. Like every time, Mo, you know, we kept we kept shouting. We we kept shouting. You know, throw it to the stomach, man. Another shot in the gut, man. Another shot in the gut. <laughs> every time he threw a shot in the gut, you 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 will see you will hear him make noises, and you will see him. You know, like we were getting mad in the corner. Like, dude, keep throwing to the body, man. Keep throwing to the body. Keep. Keep going there. But he banged him up. It was the second round where he got Issy over in the corner by us. So here it is. You know, he, he has him down. He has his elbow across his uh, throat. Yeah. So he looking right at us. He was like, man, this motherfucker ain't trying to fight. So we laughing. We literally laughing and talking to this motherfucker while he was fighting. <laughs> And, 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 you know, uh, his uh, coaches, Gary and Steve, was like, bro, focus on the fight, man. So he like, man, this motherfucker ain't trying to fight. I was like, man, get that motherfucker short elbow. Short elbow. So he gave him a real quick short elbow and then come right talking to us again. It just was real. It was, it was real engaging and real funny. But he was mainly disappointed because he wanted to KO for the fans, man. The fans that we show him so so much love, man. The people in Ireland are great. Right. Um, it's one of the best experiences I've, I've ever had in my life. Um, they treated us well. I remember we went out and got something to eat. You know, we all went out as a team. We had our colors on, and we went down to – we were eating some rotisserie chicken, spicy rice, stuff like that. Right. And um, – you know, people start recognizing the mall. So we went to go pay for our food, and they gave, us, they gave us our food free, and all they wanted to do was take pictures. It was the coolest shit. <laughs> nice. Like, wow, we looking at each other like, wow, why can't we get this type of love in, in the States, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it was just real cool, man. And everywhere we went, it just was love, man. I met some people out there, man, that I dear. I've talked, I've talked to a couple people, uh, a couple times this week, you know, from Ireland. Just calling to check on me, you know. It, it, I met some real people out there, man. It, it, it just was a great experience, man. My man James Gallagher, you know, he was he was in front of his home team, yeah. you know, his his Ireland home crowd, and you know they showed him a lot of love. You know, he he's on to come up. Um, it, it was, you know, I'm, I was all smiles, man, all smiles, man. But Mo was really, he was disappointed because he wanted to knock out for the fans, man. That's, you know, when when you get that type of love, man, you want to put on the show. Right, and definitely. I still, I still say Mo put on the show, but he was just by himself. But let me tell you, the dopest part of the trip to me was – you know, we all we were all in the in the same hotel, and you know, Manuel Silva, man, that's a cool dude, man. Uh, yeah, you know, that's that's a wild boy. I, I, I've seen I've seen I look at him a little differently now, man. Hanging around him and 
you know, seeing him, seeing him with that drink in him, man. <laughs> he's a, he's a wild. He was showing us, he was showing us crazy videos on his phone of, of the violent acts that they have that that happens in Brazil, man. He's a like dude. He's a wild dude. Um, um, yeah. Let's see. Um, uh, dang, brain fart. What was that? Oh, you were saying like it was like uh, the coolest part of the whole thing was like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The coolest part. This shit, like after the fight, um, like there, I think here. Let's see, it's a five-hour difference, so yeah. we were, you know, so at like maybe two o'clock, it was probably like nine o'clock here in the states. So they kept the bar open for us, you know, cause they knew we was going to be the last one. So we had a big, like my flight left at 1130. Yeah. I didn't go, I didn't go to bed until like six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, yeah, man, cause we was up drinking Guinness and it just, it was, it was, it, it was Bama fighters. Bama is like a promotion over in the UK. Yeah. Uh, met some cool dudes over there. Um, met some I- ISKA kickboxing cats over there, man. They, they, all they kept saying is, man, you know Eminem, you know Eminem. I said, man, well, you know, you know. I started showing them some pictures, and they were like, oh, you know, it, <laughs> it, it, it was, it was, you know, like when they think Detroit, they think Eminem, man. Right. You know, you know me, man. I had to, I had to show them a couple things. Just like, oh, <laughs> so it made me look big. I'm like, yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> but look. Look, about I was I was talking to um this this beautiful chick named Diana from uh, Portugal. Yeah, and she's an she's an MMA promoter, and she was uh, talking to more about some things. Ishi had wound up walking in, so um as he came in, um you know he he did you know japanese people are real respectful man so he seen mo he nodded his head to him and mo nodded his head to him and then right there in the lobby mo started showing him everything he did wrong in the fight right and it was like a, it was like a drill session in the lobby in front of everybody that was there to party right and it was some of the coolest shit that you'll ever see because you don't see you don't see that that side of the, of the fighters. You never get a chance to see that side. All you see is the promo, the bad, what leads up to this. But you don't see two dudes that know that it was just a fight, and they come from two different cultures. Right. And and they were. I mean, it was it was just beautiful, man. If you love this shit, if you love this sport. It, it, it's some. Of, it's some of the. It was that shit. It was just real touching, man. Because you don't see that type of shit, man. It just was sport. I'm, I'm, it epitomized what sportsmanship supposed to be be like, man. So, you know, it it was real cool, man. But yeah, that, great experience, man. Great experience. I wish I was going to Japan, man. But you know, for for other reasons, you know, I'm gonna be chilling here for the holidays with my family. But. He's going to go out there, and he's going to go out there, and he's going to delete, delete. the competition. <laughs> delete! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to be gonna uh, delete. He's going to be he's out there. Uh, delete the competition. <laughs> yeah. The sun that's rising. <laughs> <laughs> going to the, the fighting, the federation of fighting that is rising. That is rising. <laughs> Going to fight Brother Mirko in the uh, the weight of the open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he go get it, man. He he's uh go go out there and he's gonna win again this year, man. I, I'm I'm real anxious to see the matchup. Um, I had some people hit me up today, man. Are you coming over to Japan? I'm like, man, I can't, man. I want to, but ugh, I got some shit going on, man. But you know, I'm gonna see my brother real soon, man, and I'm probably gonna talk to him tonight sometime, man. But yeah, I'm proud of him, man. I watched him persevere through a lot of shits, through a lot of through a lot of bad things, man. I've been rocking with this dude since his fifth, sixth fight, and now, now we at what? Twenty six fights. So I've been rocking with him for about twenty fights now, man. So I'm talking about early in his career when people really didn't know who he was. I've always 
spoke his name and you know that that's definitely a brother man man he's really you know the same the same way i love hip-hop man is the same way i love this shit man I, I look at both of them the same and i wouldn't change my life for the world man because it you know it, it gives me a total different insight you know i'm always a fan first just like i say in hip-hop right but but i get to really see the the dirty shit that go on, man. Like oh. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be dirty shit to be going on in the background. And it's like, wow, like Mo don't go through the shit because he's one of their stars. But you know, you, you see the fighters that's really going through it and you know that they need it. You know, they, they might be the biggest name fighter in the world or they may have that name, but in real life, you know, you are living better than them. And it shouldn't be, I mean, you know, when you put your life on the line, man, you know, yeah. pay what you owe, man. Pay these dudes what, what you owe. It's it just one of them things, man, for me. If you on TV, man, you should be doing better than me, period. Right, right, definitely, definitely. And that you know, I'll I... be seeing these dudes, man. These dudes be, be needing quarters to get on the phone, and <laughs> and it's not a good thing. Definitely. And, uh... That kind of, you know, goes into um, the UFC on Fox event from this past uh, weekend. Um, that was, uh, you know... Didn't, didn't, I, didn't I predict that shit? <laughs> yeah, I think you did, man. Uh, I know I said I wanted both of them motherfuckers to lose, right? Um, I believe so. And that, that shit is crazy. It's like, aside from the whole, you know, Araya Faber uh, retirement, the... the the, the two most hyped fighters for that event were Paige Van Sant and Sage Northcutt. And, they got L's. And they both, you know, they both lost. And it, it's, it's, and it's, and that kind of ties into the thing that's going on with, uh, with the, the Rousey on Nunes fight, where it's like you have these one-sided. fighters, they're one sided promotions. And what happens when these, when these fighters lose? Like, there's nothing to shift any sort of spotlight to these other people. You know what happens when one of those fighters lose? They call Conor McGregor. <laughs> right. They like, call Conor. And the, and the thing is, is that, and then, um, and the thing is with that, and we're looking at the, the payouts for... Uh, uh, cause I, I sent you the payouts for that uh, for the night, and when nah. it, are you talking about for uh, for UFC yeah. fight night? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It, it's crazy that. because out of all like out of all the from the main for like the 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 main events for that uh um for that card, the winner of the actual main event got the got the least amount of money. Michelle Watterson. What she got ten grand, some shit like that. No, she actually got she got thirty. Oh, well, she ended up making um, yeah, fifteen and fifteen. She made she made thirty and fifteen, and then got the um the fifth. I guess fight of the night. The, yeah, the fifty. Uh, the fight of the night bonus. Um, that's that bullshit, man. But her base was thirty, which is le- less than everybody else. And the do you, and like let just let just put like the base. Uh, like the base pay, performance pay, just in question right now. Uh, Watterson and Van Zant, they uh, made uh, mm. thirty thousand and forty three thousand uh, respectively. You know how they got rebuy deals. Yeah, you know how you know how just in general they say, like women make seventy percent of uh, of what a man makes. Yep. This literally happened between the two co-main events because with Mickey Gall and Sage Northcutt. Mickey Gall got mm-hmm. thirty grand, or I mean forty grand, and Sage Northcutt got sixty grand. So just in those base pay, in comparison to the the women's uh, match, that's like seventy percent. Why is Sage Northcutt getting sixty grand a fight? Right, and I'm and I'm actually surprised that Mickey Gall's already getting forty grand. Mickey Gall beat CM Punk. CM Punk. Uh, was CM Punk made some bread, man? I, I forget what his numbers was. It was, it was, but it was a hun- it was he, a half a half a million. Just uh, see, yeah, come he, on, dude. 
you paying that bread to an unproven fighter. Right. So now you got somebody like Mickey Go who coming in here on his knuckles, maybe getting 10, 15, 20 grand. Now you already beat, you beat a dude that just making a half a million dollars. The 20, the extra, tw- the, the extra 20 grand that he got, what well, his base was his base 40 or a base 20? Mickey Gall's base uh, was uh, actually no, his base was twenty. Then uh, then he got the uh, um, the the twenty win bonus. And actually, with M- so, Michelle Waterson, so he did. Yeah, with Michelle Waterson, it was fifteen and fifteen. I I, I read this wrong, so it was fifteen see, and fifteen see, with her. And that's still peanuts for him because he probably still he probably got twenty to fight for. So he's still a ri- he, Yeah, he getting fucked right now. Like these dudes is. Oh my God, man, man, man! Know your worth, man. Know and, your worth, man. And even with uh, even with the uh, Araya Faber, uh, Brad Pickett, Araya Faber got uh, three hundred and twenty uh, grand, but Brad Pickett only got forty grand. Araya Faber earned that money, though. Oh, of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, so I, I can't complain when I see Araya Faber or Dominic Cruz or one of them dudes. Make that type of bread because them dudes put in work. So it's like when I hear somebody like Uriah, okay, I'm cool with that. I ain't mad at that. You know, Uriah, Uriah put in work for what we see now. He made it possible for them dudes to get bread at that weight class. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, but it, people it don't just... remember UFC didn't have that shit prior to um, UFC buying WEC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Yeah. But, yeah, when it comes down to it, it's just really weird that, like, the main event, like, the winner of the main event probably got, one, like, some of the, the least payout of That's everything. That's what I be saying, man. That's what I be saying. These dudes be on TV, and I'm doing better. They looking at they looking at my shit like, damn, what you do? Well, you know, a little something. A little, a little, a little, a little, a little something. <laughs> <laughs> I had, had to do. He just kept looking. He kept looking at my piece. I'm like, damn, dude, you a fighter, man. You, you know. But man, that's so. I'm like, dude, going out there winning that fight night bonus. I'm pretty sure you can do something a little better than this, you know. But they really, and that's when you learn. It's like, wow, man, these dudes. You know, we put them on pedestals, but they everyday people just trying to make it, man. Right. You know. And bottom line is, if you're in there risking your life. You on TV, especially UFC or Bellator, you know, you you pay what you owe, you know, and to be one hundred, you negotiate your worth. That's one thing more always say: know your worth, and and you know, don't go under what, you know, don't go under what you believe your worth is. And most people, they be so quick to, they just want the UFC glitz and glamour. That you know they willing to sign the, to make five and five. <laughs> <laughs> really, five and five? Damn, dog! Damn, my jeans cost more than that. Be quick. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But um. Damn. Yeah. My rims cost more than that. Son. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Right, right. We, we win that. We win more than that in dice games, dude. I'm just saying, it's like, wow, you know your worth, man. But y'all yeah, love this shit, man. I love this shit. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, okay, it's uh, almost the end of the year, so that means UFC 207 is right around the corner, finally. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, and I'm and I can't wait to. And I and I can't wait for this to get here because the the one sided Ronda Rousey fear the return promotion is a little uh, much, uh, a little much. Like, can, can you throw like a little a little bit of the story the other way to Amanda Nunes? Just a little bit, you know? Nah, nah, she ain't getting that, man. Like, and I hate to I hate to be I hate to be like this, man. I think it's one way for for another for another reason. You know the the fact that I mean it's not surprising with 
her being openly gay. Um, that you really don't hear nothing about him out of no no ass. Oh yeah, they don't, you know, they don't say anything about her. It, yeah, you don't hear nothing. If you're not a if you're not a fight fan or or, or person that that knows the ins and outs, you wouldn't know who the fuck she was. And that's so sad, man. That's so sad. You know, so sad. I, you know, um, you know, I, I've been around some people that say that she kind of gasses out in the first round. And I, I really hope that don't happen. You know, I hope she, I hope she, I hope she smashes Ronda Rousey, man. Kill the return, not fear the return. Kill the return, man, <laughs> and, and and you know go make some C movies. And they they also no, they notice, also announced notice, that, notice I didn't say A movies, I said C movies. <laughs> C movies. <laughs> and they also just announced that uh, Ronda Rousey's. Wait, no, not- you know, you know, I just want to say this, man. Before you go down, let me cut you off, man. Oh, no problem. How they got her playing Dalton, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and in the road house movie right right <laughs> the fuck man are you kidding me patrick swayze he rolling over in his grave right now man that's some bullshit right i'm just saying man i had to put it out there man. <laughs> not saying that a female is not capable of doing that but if you're gonna do that you want an mma chick to play that role god damn it you gonna get gina karana not fucking around the rouse Right, man. <laughs> right. That's just me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's all good. And the thing is, they um they just like officially like announced that she's gonna have a total media blackout ahead of this fight, like to the she's point gonna have what a total media blackout. She's not gonna do any media. No one associated with her is gonna do any media or talk to anybody. Before. Well, 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 no, no, unless it's like something like the Today Show or Good Morning America okay. or, yeah, they're going to pick and choose what they can do. But you know what? Another, uh, another fighter couldn't do that shit. You know, you, you, you motherfucking take Conor McGregor off a of car for not doing media shit. Right. But yet you let her see, but you know what, you know what, see, again, you got to think about this. Who manages her? The owners, the owners of the UFC manages her career outside of the UFC, direct conflict of interest. Right. <sighs> who else can, who else can do the shit that she do right now? And no. what other person, what other fighter do they represent in the UFC? I don't think they represent any other fighter in the UFC. Right. Every, yeah, like you said, like when Connor uh, tried to do it, he got roasted. If anybody else tried to do it, every, everybody else gets like Connor bring the most bread to the table. And he's the most bread. And he still had to do all that. Dude. <laughs> yeah, she that's that's why she needs to lose, bro. That's the whole reason why she needs to lose. She loses to me, women MMA grows, it gets better, and then she could go, they could put all this money into a movie on her, then they can flop, then she might get another chance, and then it'll flop again, and then she'll try to come back, I'm ready to come back again, and get her ass beat again, then <laughs> she'll try to go back. And then we're basically at the point where we should be seeing the tail, you know, the bottom, you know, she should be like, slipping on that slope right now, you know? And if Amanda Nunez do what she's supposed to do, because I believe in you, Amanda. I believe in you. Right. <laughs> I believe in you, Amanda. We need her up out of here, man. It's just, it just bad, man. And I, do it for the culture. You know, <laughs> I, when, you, when you see the shit that she get away with, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think she's going to freeze up in that, man. I don't care how good you practice, man. Think about this. She ain't fought in a year, bro, and getting a title shot in her return. And you know what the thing is? Is that, and I've I seen other people comment about this that doesn't make any sense about the way they're setting this up. One of the main, like, byproducts of that last fight when she got knocked out by uh, Holly Holm was that 
all of this was way too much and it was on her shoulders and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and this is, that's the story they're painting now that the yeah. world's on her shoulders and blah, blah, blah. Like, I thought that's what like was your, the thing that kind of got in the way of you losing that or winning that last fight, you know? Like, so that does. No, that, that wasn't, that wasn't what it was. It was that kick. Right. That <laughs> got in her way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. See, this is how I look at this. Is how I look at this shit. A real one would came back and be like, you know what? We need to run that back. And no, this is the easiest fight for Ronda to, to to get the title back. And you know what? And um, someone mentioned this uh, that even Ronda's mom says it's wrong to fight to prove people wrong the way that she's doing right now. Even her mom says they're going about it wrong. I haven't heard from my mom in a minute, man. She 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 talking again. I, I like her mom. Apparently, yes. Like she, uh, I don't know where the quote was, but uh, but it was something that I think um, uh, Ariel said on his show that um, that even her mom said that it's you know it's wrong to fight to prove people wrong. You know, fight to win, do something. But the way they're going about it right now. Is just you know just the wrong way to go about it, which possibly is setting her up for another failure. Right. Well, it's a, it. You know, if she get her ass handed to her, then I think she'll be gone. And the excuse will be, um, I just took time away, or I was preggers, or I was. Uh, you know, Ronnie need to disappear, man. Her, that Mo, that <laughs> I'm just not a Ronda fan, man. I'm not. I don't get. I, I just don't. I get it. I get it. Olympic bronze medalist, you know, judo. I get it, but you know, you should have. You know, I would have took that fight with Holly. You know what? Well, fuck that, man. She got me. I need. I need that back. Run that back. Right. You. you I. That, I. I'd have took that fight first before any other thing would have popped off. I want my belt back. <sighs> Sound like Jose all. Jose all. Yeah. Let's talk about Jose for a minute. Man. <laughs> you know. He. He's back at it, man. You know what I'm saying. You know, there's nothing that you can say about Jose Aldo, the legend. He has beat them all. He has ran through people for 10 years. Uh, You got knocked out by Connor in 13 seconds. Like, literally, that really happened. That's like you know, part of video history. Like you'll you'll see that forever. Well you'll see this for a minute. You basically got handed the belt to you twice. You never beat anybody for the UFC uh away title. Right. Or is it featherway? Uh away featherway. Featherway. Yeah. You never beat anybody for the featherweight title. Um, You never, you know, this time you get handed the belt again. And somehow, some way you've gotten so delusional to where you actually could think you could just go up to lightweight to fight Connor when, I mean, let's be real. When you fight, the numbers are generally low. You know, um, and I like you. I watch all your fights. Right. You're you're very exciting to me. I I, I I'm a Jose Aldo fan. I like how he go out there. But you're not on the radar of, of Conor McGregor. So when you talk about like delusional, and you talking about you want to fight Khabib, see, Khabib is my guy. Right. Khabib, Khabib. I've been saying this for, for the longest. Khabib is the uncrowned champion. 
and you know who whomever fights him is going to get ragged out. You know, <laughs> I like Nate Diaz, but you know, uh, you know, I, I Khabib has taken Luke Rockhold down and kept him down. You know, Khabib is on a whole other planet when you talk about grappling and wrestling. Do wrestles bears. Remember <laughs> what I said that earlier? Yeah, Remember we are. I said that in one of the first podcasts. Yeah, he wrestles bears. Do man. Re- of course. <laughs> he's wrestled bears, man. You know, if none of y'all are wrestling with bears, y'all don't have no chance. If y'all got bears in y'all lives, then okay. You know, but this dude wrestles bears, man. He he on he's a different dude. Like he's the uncrowned champ. So I don't understand why Jose is saying all the stuff that he is saying. I don't know if he's just trying to draw attention to himself or, you know, you want dog Max Holloway out, but seeing Max Holloway's ankle, it's obvious he can't fight. Uh, Yeah, Jose on some delusional shit right now, but I like you, Jose. I like you, but... You know, how you think you just run in the shit and you've been handed your belts twice. I'm just giving you facts here. Uh, you, 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 you've been handed that featherweight title twice. Here, man, here you go. You and Ronda Rousey, y'all been handed y'all titles. Here you go. <laughs> go defend it. Right. Name somebody else that they got that shit handed to them. I don't get it, you know. I don't get it, but it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 We'll see. Uh, we'll see what goes on with uh, with Aldo. It looks like he's still trying to figure out what his next fight is, and uh, he wants to do the the interim lightweight title with either, you know, as you say, Khabib or Ferguson. Um, you can't do Halloween. I love yet. what Khabib said. Khabib said, I, I don't want to. There's no challenge. I, right. I know. I don't want to wrestle. I, for what? You little man. <laughs> <laughs> you little man. He called you a little man. I can hear him saying it, too. That's some funny shit. God, I love Khabib. <laughs> Me, you, look, Jose Aldo, a bad dude. You can't front on it. Right. But Khabib, like, <laughs> I'll smash your face. <laughs> I'm professional. I'm professional fighter. I'll smash your face. <laughs> yeah, man, I like that dude. That's my guy. Word. Um, coming up on uh, UFC 207, uh, we got the the bandweight title fight between Dominic Cruz and Cody uh, Cody Garbrandt. Uh, did you see the, mm-hmm. the little back and forth on uh, Fox uh, this past weekend? I didn't. I heard about it, but I, I didn't. I read somewhere they said DC had to break up a, a brawl be, between them in the back, but I, I didn't see the back and forth. I seen the interview with him and Uriah Faber, but I didn't see the Cody's one. Yeah, uh, well, ha- like so much of it, they had to like bleep out. Uh, they, they ended up posting the un- unedited uh, version online. Uh, Cause they're swearing so much, but uh, after after Cody, uh, you know, riled them, riled up Dominic. Dominic got threw in some uh, some jabs in there, man. Like he told he told Cody like that, girlfriend. like Dominic told Cody, he's like, I've been able to make uh, to buy a house off all the about be by beating all your teammates. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, that's tough. Yeah. yeah, that's real tough right there, man. What can what can you say to that? That's like, ooh. <laughs> right. Ooh. Ooh, you just took one in the face. Right, right, rub, right. Rub it in. Rub it, rub it in, dude. Rub it in. <laughs> that's funny. Do you do you think uh uh Garbrandt has a uh, has a chance? Nope. Fun- nope. Nope. Um the thing that makes Dominic Cruz so great is his movement. He's been a fighter that's been, you know, copied, you know, been, you know, uh, if you look at TJ Dillashaw, you know, his great success, 
came um, when he started moving. You know, um, often imitated, but definitely never duplicated. You can't try to prepare for it. You can get in that cage. Right. And I just think, I just think by the third round, um, because we ain't seen Cody go past two, three rounds. I think by the third round, you're going to see Dominic Cruz, little piddle pats, you know, take effect. And I, 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 he's gonna have a, he's gonna have a fourth, fifth round stoppage, in my opinion. Right. I think he's too. I think he's too blue. I like Cody. He got some. He got thunder in the hands. But what happens when you take away the thunder? Right. Right. Nah, everybody got. Everybody got a plan until they get hit. And uh, <laughs> I don't see. I, I, I don't see uh, Dominic Cruz uh, losing to him. Right. Also, um, also today there was word that came out that uh, Cain Velasquez was going to be out of 207, but then it's quickly reported that, no, he's doing fine, and that his, uh, his fight with Verdum is still, uh, still on. It's still going on? Yeah, apparently it's still going on. Cain might fuck around, Cain might fuck around and lose again. Right, he's been yeah, he's been saying that he's back, been having you, some, a lot of back when problems. When you had back, yeah, you said what? Yeah, he's been saying he's been having a lot of back back problems. When you had back issues, those shits don't disappear overnight. So, um, I don't know. You know, I, I just don't know. But he's had a a lot of he, he his history is injuries. So uh, I, let let us hope that. Um, you know, I want to see a healthy K versus a he- healthy Wordle. Um, and I, unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever get an opportunity to see that because Kane stays injured. Right, right. You know, and I like Kane. Kane is a monster. Yeah, and also uh, on the 207 card, you have TJ Dillashaw versus uh, uh, John Lincolner. Lineker, I mean, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Uh, that's gonna be a good fight. Yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a real good fight. Um, TJ, TJ won another title shot. So TJ, I, I'll take TJ in, in, in that fight. I'll take TJ in that fight. That's gonna be an entertaining fight though, because Lineker is no joke. Right? Yeah, his la- his last fight, him uh, that I saw, I forgot who he was going against, but um. Uh... Yeah, it was it was a really good fight, and it was it was really really competitive. You know, it was one of those things where in the end you're like, "All right, I don't even want to judge that." Mhm. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely, uh, I like TJ when he ain't fighting. Um, when he ain't fighting uh, Dotson. Yeah, was, when he not yeah. fighting. Uh, <laughs> when he ain't fighting. When he ain't fighting Dotson, and when he ain't fighting motherfucking Dominic Cruz. Uh, but I do like him. I want to see him. It would be nice to see him and Uriah Faber go at it. I'm looking at the prelims, man. Wow, can't be like, man. How far do we fucking fall, man? Johnny Hendricks and fucking Neil Magny. That's the main event on the prelims. Right. Oh wow, that's a pick 'em fight. Uh, I'm gonna take Neil. Uh, I think Johnny Hendrick. I mean, I ain't saying I'm not accusing, but he's been different since you saw his arrive. Um, Do Gyum Kim against Safadine. I like I, I like I like Kim. We 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 go rock with Kim on that fight. Yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Mike Pyle over over Garcia, and then. The, Wow, okay. Cowboy Oliveira against Tim Meads. It's not a bad card, man. It's not a bad card at all. Right. Also, um, to round out the the end of the year, uh, World Series of Fighting uh, is is doing uh, an event on New Year's Eve, and it's going to be on NBC. They got my man on there against, uh, let's see. Oh wow! This gonna be a good card too. 
Wow. Okay. Um, Dustin. Uh, ooh. Yeah, he he's nice. Okay. Ugly ass John Fitch. I heard <laughs> he's pretty cool though. Um, Jake Shields. That's that's gonna be a good fight. Uh, yeah, ooh, you should know Kami. This yeah, this is a good card, man. Yeah, they're gonna be yeah. doing it. The, yeah, they're right. Uh, it's going to be at the theater at Ma- at Madison Square Garden. Wow, that's dope. So, yeah, that's they, super. That's super dope. Yeah, they got four uh four championships on the line that night. Um the the main event is Justin uh, Gaethje versus uh Zhao Zafarino. Mhm. And then uh for the welterweight, it's uh John Fitch versus Jake Shields. Then Bantam Waits, Marlon Moraes versus uh, Joseph Naldo Silva. Dude, Marlon Moraes is like, I I listened to an interview with him on the MMA Hour like a few months ago. He might be like the happiest uh-huh. dude ever. You said that who? <laughs> Marlon and uh, Moraes. He's like. You talking about that? You talking about the announcer? No, no, the 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 fighter. He's uh, the champion, the Bantam Weight champion. Uh, he's like the happiest dude ever. Like, <laughs> oh, okay, Marlon Moraes. Okay, yeah, he's like he's like one of the happiest. Du- he 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 uh he's very happy with fighting in the uh, World Series of Fighting. They say they uh he's been treated very well and he enjoys being a part of that organization. See, well, you know, what fighters want they just want to they want to. They want to feel important. You know what I'm saying? They want to make, they want to, it has to get to a point to where you want an organization to care about you. I don't think the UFC really care about all they people. You know, that's just, you know, that's how I kind of look at it. They only focus on really Really, two fighters, Connor and Ronda. Right. Ronda been gone a whole year, and it don't even feel like she's been gone a whole year because of them goddamn Metro PCS commercials. <laughs> and another, I mean, another craziest thing about like the UFC, um, and I read and I read this uh, report where uh, Nate Diaz says he don't even want to entertain anything that's less than uh, twenty million. Twenty million. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely love that because it. it, 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 it he got a right. He got a right to say that, though. Right, he definitely does, and I love that he said it. Yeah, I am not mad. I'm not mad at him at all for that shit. Like, like man, fuck that. Who who go who go look out for my interest? Right, and. uh and he he's definitely someone like we talked before that they should be or get get around and and promote heavier, you know, and not not dick him dick him around so much, you know, because he has that style and that look, and he has the talent to be like someone that could be the face of the company. That ain't what that ain't what they want. Ryan Rousey, or they want Conor McGregor, they want you know. Like we we deal with some we got man oh man yeah this is and this is why I this is why I be about you know this is this is why I like Bellator man it just to me it's it's a if you want if you really serious about your bread and, and you want your sponsors you know I hate to even sound like. Should night right now. You want your sponsors <laughs> and you want all that bread, you know, uh, no sponsor tax. Come to Bell. And then you get your show <laughs> you get your you get your show pay, your show up pay, you get your bonus pay, you get your fight of the night. If you really want all your bread, come to Bellator. That's just how I feel, man. You know, UFC, you know it just reminds me so much you know, for years prior to having new organizations and new new 
you know, leagues as far as wrestling to look at. Um, you know, for a while it was dry on the set because, you know, Vince McMahon, I mean, you, you had new, new Japan wrestling, but you didn't have, you had TNA, but nobody really paid attention, man. Right. And then all of a sudden the ring of honor got hot. And then these other end of indies got, got hot to where, you know, now there's kind of competition again. It might be from a lower level from some people, but to me, it's all about product. And that's what happens, you know, when you have certain wrestlers go to other organizations. And it's, it's the same thing with fighters, man. The smarter they get on, on, on the value they have and them putting their services out to people, you know, on, on feeling important, then you're going to see a change, man. And it's slowly happening, man. I'm telling you, Strike Force was catching up the UFC. And had UFC sign, I mean, had Strike Force sign a contract with Showtime, um, you know, before it expired, UFC would have would have never bought um, the the Strike Force. Strike Force didn't renew they uh, renew their contract with Showtime, which in turn made them get sold to the UFC. You wouldn't be seeing no Ronda Rousey's, no Daniel Cormier's, no no Luke Rockholes, no uh, Fabricio Wordos, no Robbie Lawler's, no like uh, no Teron Woodley's. You know, those are all strike force fighters. And all those fighters right now, if you think about it, they're dominating all UFC. Right. You know, so but most fans don't know that because they just think UFC is the only thing, you know, that's bubbling. But, you know, we know better than that. And there's something else uh, that was very interesting uh, recently. Uh, Randy Couture was on uh, Chael Sonnen's uh, podcast. Uh, explaining the ins and outs of the whole uh, um, Ali act because um, Chel Sonnen, um, you know, really didn't understand what it was all about and everything. So uh, Randy was breaking it down and everything. And um, Randy Couture, uh, Randy Couture has, um, he kind of has, you know, a working relationship with Bellator doing appearances. He's not signed, he yep. doesn't have a contract with them or anything or Spike TV. He just does appearances every once in a while. And he mm-hmm. he was saying about uh, there was a time when um, Randy was ha- actually had a conversation with uh, Bellator's uh, Scott Coker, and he said that Scott Coker is very receptive about having this uh, uh, Muhammad Ali Act amended for MMA uh, fighters. Uh, he knows that you yeah. know he would have to change his ways, but he's very receptive about that happening. Scott Coker is the man, dog. I see Scott, Scott Coker all the time. Um, you know, he sees me now. He greets me. He's hey, how you doing? You know, he's always polite. You know, I've seen him for probably tell me, about seven years now, man. You know, between Strike Force and Bellator. You know, um, Bjorn, I mean, I, I won't front. Bjorn Remy treated me nice, too. But right. Scott has always been cool, you know, and... and you see a person often enough, you get more comfortable of uh, kicking it with them, and that's what I've gotten from him. But uh, yeah, I like Scott Coker, man. He is that deal, and uh, I'm glad Mo is back with him. And you know, it ain't for everybody. You know, everybody's situation is different, man. My boy happy, so I'm happy. So this, so all that matter, man. But that man, going back to what you said earlier, though, man. Yeah, Mo and John Jones. Most people would say John Jones. Most people, but they don't know. All they know is John Jones. <laughs> right. That's all they know. Don't know shit else. And you know, there's some there's some shit there too, man. Because John Jones be saying some whole ass shit sometimes, man. Um, and, and Mo be letting that shit slide because I, I I let him know, you know, I, I pay attention to that shit. And I be like, dog, you know your man said this whole ass shit. Like, for instance, <laughs> when Mo fought Phil Davis, yeah. um, you know, uh, for the title, 
uh, or for interim belt. Um, somebody asked John Jones, what did you uh, think of the uh, the fight between Moe? And he was like, I didn't. <laughs> like that, man. What's so, well, well, that's some whole ass shit to say, man. You know, he be saying a little whole ass shit, which in turn, yeah, and Moe ain't never said nothing bad about that dude, ever. Right. You know? Yeah, uh, it, it, it's, yeah, man. It, like, I, whew, I be around these dogs, man. I, these dudes, man. I'm telling you, I be, yeah, but I would take Mo. I definitely would, man. Styles, that's the fight we've been talking about for years, man. That's <laughs> weird. That's weird. Well, well, so what did Chael have to say about Mo? I'm curious. Oh, I can't remember everything, but it, it was all positive. And he can't, he broke down the fight with Ishii and, you know, he thought it was a good fight. And um, I, I can't remember all the details. Pretty much that I did. Yeah, a lot of the same shit you said. Um, and it, it, was all, it was all kind of, you know, all very positive that he was, you know, saying about King Mo. Did, I, did, you, did you read the story? I don't know if I had told you the story before it, it broke. And and it's funny that it's come out like like six years later. Oh yeah, remember? Yeah, about uh, about uh, about uh, uh Chell's son and uh, helping out uh, King Mo. Yeah, 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 man. That was some real. That was real shit. I was look. I was there. I was there when that shit was happening, dog. I remember that shit, man. And right. Mo never talked about it. Never talked about it. And just one day, Chell's son had called him out the blue. Yeah. And was like, dude, if whatever you need, I got you. And that's what made me start looking at Chill Sun and like when when you know shit like that and then you see how people, you know, I mean I think people love Chill Sun and man, but for a while, man, it took Chill to win with some fans, man. But um when you know somebody that really did some real shit like that. And he had no reason to do it. He just dug Mo for whatever reason. That's yeah. some real shit, man. You know, you know, it's, it's sad that you only hear, you know, and to not even like it, he didn't put it out there in public. I mean, you know, most people would would want to know, you know, it, it just some real, this was some real shit. And, yeah. and I've had a lot of respect for Chell since then, and that's why I root for him to this day because that was just some real. Man, Mo was Mo wasn't wasn't hurting, you know, but he had just got terminated by the UFC by Zufa, you know, for for the shit that he went through, and then you know Bellator came in like, let's go, you know, so it wasn't it wasn't you know one monkey don't stop no show, but he came in like that man, and that was that was just some of the realest shit man, so that's why I fuck with Chell man because that's some. That's some real shit, man. Yeah, you know, definitely. That's just some real shit. What do you What do you think about this uh, call out that uh, Tyron Woodley uh, uh, just made? He wants to do uh, a fight with Conor McGregor in Ireland. Good for it. I hope he gets the fight. That, I've, that would be crazy, man. That would be in Ireland. That would be. A, How a, do you turn that down? That would be a sight to see. You know what I'm saying? I just was in Dublin, dog. <laughs> and ju- and just I, I, look, I, I, I would go back to that. I would go back to Dublin to see that, and I, I got places to stay now. And and you know, and he and he was saying he wants to do it in uh in that, in that one the one the eighty two thousand stadium, like, yeah, like eighty two thousand people, and in- yeah. It's like a new stadium there. The, the new stadium in Dublin, man. It's like eighty two thousand people, man. And, you know, I don't see why wouldn't he do it. Why wouldn't he do it? That would, that would, that would be that would be one of the biggest things ever for UFC, man. Like, like that would that would be insane. Just just think about like, just think about like the craziness you just witnessed being out there with Mo, and mm-hmm. that will probably oh, it, be... it would it would be it would probably. Be... I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just keeping it 100. It, it would probably be five times as, as just from a, a promotion perspective, man, or how they do things. Um, it, it, it would be, it would be some big shit. It would be some big shit. 
Definitely. Yeah, I would l- I would love to see that happen. It would be crazy. Mm. Yeah, man, I'm going back there, dog. I'm going back there, man. People, yeah, that, I'll never forget the, the love that I got there. Did you see that my boy, my boy had my logo and my name on his banner? Yeah. Oop, that was, that was like, like wow, like some dope. Like really? Oh, you know what's really crazy what's is it? the the clothes that we were wearing. Um, um, the the track suits came from um, Nearfall. They all they always customize Mo's, uh, you know, you know, team with gear. Yeah. Um, but the main sponsor for that night was Circle of Brawlers, and if you looked at the logo. The logo says C-O-B. So I'm looking at the fucking logo on the hat, and I'm like, dog, this look like my boy Crooked Eye shit, man. I hope. we didn't, Look, we Bellator um, cameras is back there, and, you know, we putting the shit on, and I'm like, Mo, man, this look like my dog shit, man. I, I hope he don't get mad when he see this shit on, 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 on Spike tonight. He was like, who's your boy? I was like, Crooked Eye. He was like, he was like, man, I hope he got a trademark, man. I said, yeah. I said, man, those are my exact words. I hope he don't get mad because it looked like Crooked Eye shit. So, <laughs> you know, later on that night, I see Crooked Eye. Um, well, the next day or some shit, I see him post some Circle of Brawler shit. So I hit him up like, dog, did you know that we, uh, I said, is this your company? He said, yeah, man, it's some shit that I do. With uh, my boy, this was shit we just started. I was like, man, so you didn't see me on TV last night with rocking your shit? I said, I said it's funny. Wow. I had just told, I, I said, it's funny. I had just told Mo that I hope you don't get mad because somebody might be bootlegging your shit, logo wise. <laughs> and we laughed about, we laughed about it. And I sent him, I sent him the pictures and shit like that. And I think it's a couple on their side or something like that. But yeah, it, 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 on, on the Instagram page. But yeah, it's just funny. I said, get the fuck out of here, man. It's small world. <laughs> That's crazy, small man. Small fucking world. That's crazy, man. Indeed, indeed. Uh, what we got on the wrestler side? Man, the other night. I know you, I know you, I know you were so happy being in front of fucking your girl, Alexis. Dude, I was, Alexis, I was like uh, tw- I was like twenty feet away from her, man. I I I know you I know you was in <laughs> fucking heaven. I go to okay, go to SmackDown Tuesday. It's it's here in Detroit. I I was a, I was able to actually buy a uh, main floor ticket, and I was like, man, I I dropped like one hundred and forty on it. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I was I was pretty fifth, good. I was fifth row on. Uh, the camera view side, like right in the middle. I got to go back and watch SmackDown again to see if I can actually see myself like in the back. I, I was looking for you because I've seen on Instagram where you posted from. Right, right. I, I didn't have anything on that was really bright, so I was all in black. So <laughs> it's not exactly <laughs> easy as to find me. But um, oh my, like SmackDown is actually really fun to see live. Um Especially when you have seats like that, um, mm-hmm. I think I think it's a, it's a very it's it's very it's a very different experience live than seeing Raw, because Raw has so many like talking segments that go on for a while mm-hmm. that you feel like you're watching a TV show. Uh, whereas um, SmackDown, they do have like the you know the talking segments, but they kind of keep them shorter, you know, because it is a two-hour show, mm-hmm. and. Right. And so it was like very, you know, very fun to watch, um, you know, that up close. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, and then they 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 also like they do. And the funny thing is, and I I thought this is how it happened, but I didn't think they would do it this way. They were really doing it this way. But they actually do 205 live live after Smackdown. Um, oh yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. They do it after SmackDown, and um, I actually, I actually didn't um, stay uh, much for that because 
This is the one thing about like when you're on the main floor at a WWE event, like that that's a tiring experience. Oh, it is, dude. Because you are generally, there. I don't fuck with nothing but but main floor or the level just before. Right, like on um, the main floor. Right, two hours is enough, man. Like, like two hours is like enough when you're yelling at all the wrestlers and cheering and everything. After two mm-hmm. hours, I was ready. I was like, man, I gotta, I got a jet, man. I'm, I'm. I'm tired, man, but it was it was it was it was it was cool to see it live, you know, and I would definitely love to go to to another SmackDown again. Like those are like those are uh pretty awesome. Um the one thing you do notice though when you're that close to like WWE action is that you real mm-hmm. in comparison to like going to indie wrestling shows, is that you do notice how safe they work well no doubt yeah you do notice like there's some of those wrestlers who really still need to work on like selling their punches and stuff like that you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're like yeah you're like ah that looked kind of soft man can you uh you need to sell that a little bit better you know right (laughs) give me some emotion with that Right. It, it, Give me some emotion with that. Right, man. It was like uh, it was, you know, was you know crazy. what I did enjoy. What's I that? enjoyed the way AJ Styles just smashed that motherfucker to get him out the way real quick. That was because I'm so tired of us focusing on on this pug. That was great. That was that was a great way to start the show. I mean, it was just beautiful. Like wow, and surprising. You know, me a little bit is how they put Baron Corbin in the mix, man. I think that makes AJ look that much much dope. Yeah, I like that. I I definitely like that in the end. It was it was it, it was something that you weren't really. It was surprising. You really wasn't expecting that they would just throw him in the mix like that. And yeah, I uh, didn't expect that. And and they kind of like started new things uh, this week. It, it reminded me, you know, look, it reminded me of. The 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 R era, the 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 Raw era, the 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 era. Uh, uh, what was the era? The Attitude era. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of a little bit. The Attitude era, where it, you know, when was the last time you heard them say "bitch" on TV? Right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, like uh, Natalia dropped a couple of bitches, and then um, and then you see what um. The Miz said to uh, Renee Young. <laughs> oh man, that was hard. That was savage. Miz, man. Uh, I'm, I'm, look, look, I'm, I'm starting to like Miz again. Right, and and the the thing is, is like all that, all this, all that stuff when it, all that stuff uh, that kind of involves the women of that show is like really directly tied to the the Total Diva show. And that's some shit. Yeah, it's 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 directly tied to. Everything kind of is linked to that show, you know, with them on mm-hmm. on SmackDown, which is like the and that's the funny thing about that though. With SmackDown, they're actually using the stuff that's on Total Divas directly, and yeah. being. But when it comes to Raw, it's really it's really weird because on Total Divas, you have like someone like Rusev. Who actually comes off as a really funny guy and a really nice and funny guy, but then on Raw, he's supposed to be this. He's. It's very confusing because he's supposed to be the heel, but Enzo's the one trying to uh, hook up with his wife. Right. So. Right. <laughs> that's super confusing, you know. So I'm glad that if. If if SmackDown's gonna play off of Total Divas, that they're actually keeping it sort of realistic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm totally with you on that, man. It makes sense, man. It let it watches it lets people, you know, it guides them to the WWE Network or um, E Television to watch the show. And and I like that they kind of started new things this week. You know, like you said. 
you had the thing with um, um, AJ Styles and Baron Corbin and uh, Dolph Ziggler. But then you had Dean Ambrose start this thing with The Miz now. Yeah. And they, I, I just feel like this week they did a good job of sort of transitioning some things away from what they were doing, you know. So hopefully these storylines start to continue and we get some new things, you know, leading up to, uh, to Royal Rumble. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious who we go wind up seeing uh, in the Royal Rumble this year. <laughs> it's and that was the thing that yeah. I and that was the thing that I um I sort of hated most about what was going on with um um with Roadblock and then the Raw afterwards is that the the only thing nothing really changed in the storylines. The only thing that changed was that the New Day eventually lost their uh, tag team belts to Cesaro and uh, Sheamus. And mm-hmm. I think the only thing that was super, like, cool on the Raw brand is this return of Neville as this heel. And did you see that? Yeah, that was great. Man, okay, honestly, okay, they've been they've been missing the missing the boat with Neville for so long. I From think, the very beginning, I think this return as this sort of heel can not only like finally. Rejuvenate his career. Rejuvenate his career and actualize his potential. But I think it it can also save this cruiserweight division that they've been blundering so much. Yeah. Yeah, I like Neville. I like Neville. And I think that might have been the plan all alone, though, because I had been here for the cruiserweight division, about the cruiserweight division for a while. And to see it, you know, like, wow, he's finally going back to where he should be. You know, it just made that much more sense, man. And to hear him talk on the mic the way I'm here talking on the mic now, it's like, damn, I didn't even know he had that shit in him like that. He got, like, when he got on the mic on Raw, that is the best that I've ever heard him on the mic. I was, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, he got he got so much better. Like, this, this is the novel that we need. And if they can center that division wait, no. around him and this, I think they can save this division and make the cruiserweight division actually good and something that people can invest in. Yeah, Neville got potential though. He 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 could he could be a you know a regular WWE champion as well, man. Oh. I, you know, he, he, I mean, he got that type of potential, man. And then when you think about the matchups that you could, you could put him against AJ Styles, you could put him against fucking Seth Rollins, you could put him against, you know, uh, Finn Finn Balor when he returns. Like it's a lot of matchups, man. The only only dude I'm looking forward to right now coming is Samoa Joe. Man, that's that's what I'm waiting on. Yeah, I I hope that we that and we say this every week, man. But we hope like Samoa Joe does get a shot on the main roster because there's so many of those like sort of dream matches, or even like things that we can return to from you know Samoa Joe's uh, career that we can do mm-hmm. again. You know, we can do the Samoa Joe and AJ Styles, or we can get the Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar. You know. You know, it's I would like, like to see him against him again, but him seeing him against AJ in a bad, uh, you know, constellation. But I definitely would like to see Samoa and, and Brock go at it, man. That's you know, two motherfuckers who don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's that's what I want to see. Two dudes who don't give a fuck, and I definitely will be going with Joe. <laughs> I will be rocking with Joe, and I think, and I, I think that, go, and I think that I pairing would be like, uh, be a more believable fight, you know, for Brock Lesnar. Yeah, it'd be more something believable that we can be like, oh, yeah, all right, that's this might actually be be a, be a brawl, man. This might be a, a slobber knocker, <laughs> as uh, Jim Ross would put it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I miss JR. JR used to be that dude. JR used to be that guy. Definitely. But, uh, 
Yeah, I, just, you know, hopefully, uh, but yeah, it was just it was just weird. Like Roadblock just seemed like another episode of Raw, and didn't really. Yeah, to me too. And it didn't really advance anything. It seemed like it was just. We still don't know why Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins are buddying up these days. Um, we still have Seth Rollins calling out Triple H. Um, and it's it's. I it, think they I think they're doing that shit entirely too early, man. That yeah. They 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 they. I mean, I can understand. Something should happen at the Royal Rumble to set that shit up at WrestleMania. Cause that's what they're doing. They're setting that shit up for WrestleMania. Then, then I'm hearing that Roman Reigns is going to have a feud with Braun Strowman. So when is that going to happen? Is that going to happen at the Royal Rumble as well? Like, you know, um, well, well uh, allegedly setting that up for WrestleMania. But th- this is shit that I'm hearing down the pipeline of, of what's, gonna be happening eventually man but i don't care who they put fucking roman reigns against man <laughs> we are not going to like roman reigns he's he just <laughs> that, the guy that that was another thing know. about being at uh, smackdown anytime roman reigns image was on the uh screen in between breaks the crowd booed man <laughs> Yeah, man they, you, you know why they boo because they don't want to they don't want the last thing you want is they have a motherfucker force, force down your throat, man. That's what they do, man. The WWE is bad at that, man. Forcing a motherfucker down your throat, man. And we don't like that, dude. It don't matter what you do. You know, we just, we not going to like him. You know, get him a new move. Get him. He needs a lot of shit, man. But, you know, I, I don't fuck with Roman Reigns like that, man. He just don't fucking do it for me, man. I'm, I'm sorry, man. You know, but he good for the kids. You know, he might be the new John Cena. Right, right, right. He good, he, good, he good for the kids. The kids like him, so that's cool. He's safe. I ain't mad. But, you know, I don't really fuck. I don't fuck with him like that. You know, I get mad when I see him. Like, again, <laughs> like, oh, again. No. Really. And you should never get mad when you see a person trying to do their job, man. But, <laughs> <Right>. you know, <laughs> you know, I you know, but it's like, wow, man, you know, that dude, man, he's, you know, I don't know, same move, you know, that Superman punch getting played like a motherfucker, man, we'll tell you that much, man. I always you know. thought that was corny, though, man, like. <laughs> it's getting played, Woo! nobody cares about that shit, man, nobody cares about your greasy head, none of that, <laughs> like, you don't, you don't look cool, like, none of the shit you do, everything looks forced. Nothing looks. No, the dopest you ever look is was against AJ Styles, and that's because AJ Styles made it dope. Right. You know, he can make anybody look dope. Yeah, hell, hell, he just made a dude that looks like you know an oddity, fucking dope in Ellsworth. Right. You know we're not supposed we're not supposed to be watching that guy in real life, in real wrestling life. I know that sounds crazy, but in real <laughs> wrestling life, we're not supposed we're not supposed to be looking at that type guy. He's like the anti guy, right? You know, but hey, hey, even AJ made that guy look cool, man. So hell, you know, it can be done. Yeah, but so sad, so fucking sad. You know what I did like on Raw was just what I did like Braun Strowman just coming out and like beating everybody up. I think that was cool. Yeah, but you know, like I told you, Vince is about to go with the, like Vince got this thing where he, you know, to put a little guy, to put a guy over, put him against an unfathomable guy, a big guy. Yeah. And that's what they go, they go try to put, they go try to put uh, uh, Roman Reigns uh, against this dude, man. It's like, man, we don't want to see that shit. It's going to be then- the big show all over again. And Nobody that's and that's how that raw and that's how raw ended was like the last person he he uh he did beat up was Roman Reigns I believe, so I think they are planting the seeds for that. Yeah, man, everybody want to see that whole ass shit, man. You say that shit, man. It, nah, nah, leave that alone, man. We don't we ain't fucking with that right now. Right. You know, but hey, they gonna do what they gonna do, man. Hey. Yeah, sad but true, man. This big man, man, it's his company. 
It's his company. Right, right, right. All right, to kind of like close out uh, the podcast, this is pretty much gonna this is gonna be the last podcast of the year. So yes, sir. So 2016, it's been a weird year. There's been a lot of a lot of celebrity deaths, a lot of well-known deaths. We have yeah. we have Donald Trump about to be our president. Um, yeah. <laughs> all sorts. There's all sorts of atrocities going on from our own city to a, to to Flint to other countries all sorts of craziness you know so um and even through that you know we you know we all have our own you know struggles but you know there's definitely been some good times this year you know i've definitely had a lot of uh great moments and a lot of good growth in 2016 so i'm hope you know hopefully you know keep this going on through to the new year uh definitely uh you know, thankful that you've been able to uh, become a part of this podcast and, you know, grow it to, into something that, you know, something more than I wanted it to be in the first place. So, uh, thanks, my dear. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me, too, man. I, this has been a great outlet for me as well. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, that I, I could be a part of this, man. And uh, we're going to make this shit even better every time we do it. Yes. So yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just uh, just thankful for all the uh, all the stuff that uh, you know, all the you know all the, all the personal growth that I've been able to do this year, 2016, and anybody that's helped me along the way. Um, mm-hmm. Been able to let go of a lot of things, um, embrace some other things. So uh, I'm just you know excited to you know continue on, go you know get into 2017. You know, make things, you know, make things better, you know, make things great, you know, be able to mm-hmm. do bigger and better things, you know what I'm saying? Indeed. Indeed, my friend. Cool. Indeed. Uh, cool. All right. Tell everybody where they can find you online. All uh, right. You can find me online at uh, Twitter forward slash V Styles, V S T Y L E Z. Uh, same thing on Facebook, you know, my, my regular page is, uh, you know, www.facebook.com forward slash V styles. My official artist page on Facebook that's verified is V styles official or official V styles, uh, forward slash from, uh, facebook.com. And on Instagram, forward slash V-S-T-Y-L-E-Z. And that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, 2016 has been a wild year for me as well. Um, Some ups, some downs. uh, A lot of great, you know, I've had learning experiences this year. I've been to a lot of places this year. Um... 2017 for me is about uh, putting out some new music and, uh, you know, letting y'all enjoy this Thornton Mellon shit that I'm about to put out, man. So I, I'm I'm real thankful, man. And uh, thank you, you know, uh, Kelly, for having me a, a part of this podcast, man. It, it's definitely giving me an outlet to, to rock out on, on my feelings. Um, and uh, 2017 going to be great, man. So let's get to it, baby. All let's right. Let's get to it. All right. Thank you. And see everybody in 2017. Happy New Year. Peace. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Fresh, 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 fresh is the word.